Hi, Pete Moore, Gunmark TV. Just been hunting this morning, got no luck, but that's the way it goes. Um, I think in the last couple of decades, one of the biggest breakthroughs for me has been the introduction of the affordable laser rangefinder. Um, before these devices existed, estimating range without any help is hard unless you're very experienced. And a lot of guys would only shoot to their zero range, which is sensible. However, if you want to push the distance further, you need to know how far the animal is away for a humane shot, which is what it's all about. Um, I remember, oh God, how long was a long time ago, buying a second-hand uh, Leica 900. It was a sort of a flat, rectangular, green package. I think it was a spec of six by twenty magnification. Uh, quite basic. You could select yards or meters, not much more. But what it did do, it could measure the distance properly, um, and it was a revelation for me. So, I, mean, I, I, I knew about shooting, I knew my ballistic drops, how you compensate for it in the scope, but until you have the all-important distance of the target, all that information is useful, but not as useful as it could be. Um, my most memorable shot when I was much younger uh, was a roebuck at 385 yards. Summer evening, out with a friend of mine, and we spotted this buck in the middle of the field, and uh, typical of a roebuck, we stand there, which is very useful, and he said, are you going to shoot us? I said, well, I'm not sure, it's a long way. He, says, he said to me, look, your rifle can shoot. He says, I know you can shoot. He says, and, um, you know, and you've got a laser range finder. Uh, and if you, if you don't try, you never know. And I thought, well, he's right. Now, I was a little bit worried about it. I thought, well, he's right. It's a bit of a leap of faith. So I got down, put out the bipod, pinged the deer two or three times, got an average. And on my ballistic data, which I carried on my scope cap, um, the drop was 14, 15 inches, as I recall. And so what I did, I hauled the crosshair about seven, eight inches up from his back. So if assume it's a 15 inch drop, that bullet would have gone reasonably between the heart lung intersection, which is what we aim for for a standard body shot on a deer. And uh, I said a little prayer to a gods of hunting, uh, carefully aimed again, carefully squeezed the trigger and boom, hit him. He ran 50 yards and then dunk, straight down. As it was, it was a heart shot. I was a little low, but I would have never ever attempted that without something that I could rely and trust on. And that, that, that's when the laser rangefinder really brought it home to me. Today there's so much choice um, and we find now that there's more binocular types coming out because the little compact monoculars are all well and good and they're nice and handy, they do work, but they're not steady to hold and support. And one thing you do when you use a laser rangefinder, you've got to be cock on with it. Because if you're on a deer and you're wobbling around like this, you might ping him 10 yards in front or five yards behind. So a pair of binoculars, two hands on, better support. Um, I, some time ago, got myself a set of um, Shiroshi um, EL42 ranges, um, which I consider probably some of the best um, laser range fire box in the world. However, uh, typically of Swarovski and Zeiss and the other only other companies that produce quality optics, you're paying a lot of money, two thousand, two and a half thousand pounds, and that is a lot of money. Um, there you go. However, we have seen an increase in the um, what I call the middle market, and a great example of this is what I have here. It's from Gecko, the ammunition people. Well, they're part of the RWS group, and um, they've been for some time pushing series of scopes and binoculars. Uh, and this is the 10 by 50 RF rangefinder. Um, it's a very typical European style binocular, reasonably short and compact, green rubber armoured, which seems to be compulsory these days, with textured side panels. Um, not too heavy, um, and it comes with the usual features. So at the front, you've got your um, battery compartment, then you have your two main control functions, an arrow with a raised button which is to fire the laser which you see as a, a, red, a red circle comes up. Then underneath you've got the menu button which means you can toggle through uh, and, and select which I've done in detail further on in this video. At the rear you have individually focusable eye, eye barrels which is quite useful, some binos only have one. They come with uh, rear caps and this hideous clip-on front cap, I just hate it. Uh, and I'm not trying to be picky, but it's just not not good. On my Shiroskis and the you have individual rubber cups that stay with it. You get half decent padded shoulder strap. The unit comes in a carry case, little zip semi-hard carry case, which is useful for storage and things like that. They say you can um, measure up to 2,800 meters, which is a long way, and uh, yeah, maybe you can, but uh, I can't quite see the point of it for hunting deer. Um, but 
they're saying a typical measurement range is more realistic between 10 and 600 meters. The measurement accuracy is um, plus or minus one meter out to a thousand meters and then from 1,000 to 3,000 it's plus or minus two meters. Um, to be honest these are, fa th th these are sort of figures taken from a test bed. My personal experience of years using laser rangefinders, um, it all depends on the target distance, the stability of the, um, of the user, the target colour, its shape and its size. They're practical factors actually come in the field, so if you see a deer in the field and it's getting low light, the first thing you need to do, if you wanted to measure it correctly, would be to support yourself on like the bonnet of a truck or something and get the steadiest hold you can because you can ping a deer or any animal uh, with the laser and if you're not careful about how you hold them then what happens is you'd be pinging in front or behind the animal and therefore you won't get a, a, a good enough read to be used but yeah that's a they are in my opinion a quality set of binoculars here are the two primary controls the arrow is the bu uh, firing button for the for the laser and the M small M in the circle is the menu which allows you to select the amount of functions but they're all, they're, they're all very very practical for example you can go yards meters best shot last shot in terms of range um, and temperature which is centigrade and Fahrenheit which is quite nice and then as I said before you can flick on to the line of sight angle adjustment packages which there's, there's four there as well but there's no ballistic plug-in put a card in that I don't think you need it on these sort of binoculars you know your drops just you just apply them here we are at the back of the binos showing in more detail the controls plus we have this rather big fat focusing wheel which is really nice easy to get hold of easy to operate and each individual barrel of the binoculars has a sort of called a pre-focusing ring which is this one here what you do you say target 100 yards away you shut your left eye bring the binos up and just adjust the focus with this for your right eye then repeat it for the left eye and once that's done, both eyes are in focus for the barrels, and then you just use the main ring for um, your standard work and focus. As always with these things, you've got twist up, twist down eye cups that suit glasses wearers and non-glasses wearers. Um, blue on the lenses looks quite good. These are 50mm objectives, so we'll suck in a little bit more light than before. And here from the man, there's an overview of display information. As you can see, the target marker is a red circle best last target, horizontal distance, temperature in degrees Celsius and Fahrenheit, direct distance line of sight, angle in degrees, units of HR, meters, yards. Um, so it's a very simple display. Here we see the four viewing options you have with the binos. First one is dis this display provides the clearest possible field of view and it shows the central aiming circle and, and the range underneath. Line of sight angle, direct distance measurement in line one, angle display in line two, so it's for an angled shot, but what you get is a degrees in the lower line here, it says 168, and underneath it's 24 degrees. The one that I would use is LOSHR line of sight, direct distance measurement in line one, horizontal distance measurement in line two. Again, you've got 168, and then below it is 149. So as you can see, that's what you would actually aim using for your ballistics. And the final one, line of sight temperature, direct distance measurement, and then temperature display in line two. That's probably more important if you're doing more long range shooting. But that's quite, uh, it's quite simple and easy. And all you do is basically press the, um, the menu button for two seconds and you just cycle through using the firing button. And then you select pressing the menu button again. Uh, but for me, as I said, it's uh, line of sight HR is the one that I like to use because it means all you do, if you've got an angled shot, you just look down to the second line and it tells you what your drop should be rather than the actual distance to target, which, as we know, an angled shot is always different. But uh, overall, I'm quite impressed with these. Um, they held out well against my um, Soroskis, which I use as control. Um, I've got 600 yards up there and... Um, Basically, they were keeping up to each other within one or two meters. They aren't too large, they aren't too heavy, and overall they're quite a nice set of binos.